Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, lie back, and relax. And know that today's episode is going to be calm and inconsequential, so you don't have to listen to the end of the episode. You can just drift off and know that we're not going to get anywhere. We're just going to have a simple well, conversation. We'll get somewhere. There'll be an end destination. It just means that sometimes you want to take a detour off that road. Sure. But, but you can also come with us for the entirety of the destination. That's true. If you are, that's great too. But if you don't, even better. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. I always like to aim to listen to the end or watch the end or whatever it is. I just don't ever make it to the end. Right. (laughs) Right. And, and we hope you don't ever make it to the end of our podcast. We hope you find sleep, but if not, you find relaxation. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to say that we're not alone today in content. We are joined, um, by, by our listener. Uh, we got a wonderful suggestion from listener, Emma, Dolphinian. I don't know if I'm saying that last name correct. I gave it to Amanda because I didn't want to make a mistake and I knew I would. But Emma thought it might make for some interesting discussion if we talked about um, birth flowers and the flowers associated with each birth month. And their meaning. And Emma's given us a few suggestions. So this is the one we're going to do this week, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. So Amanda, you love flowers. Yeah, we We've and I estab- love flowers. We've too. established our love of, of flowers. In fact, we sent some friends flowers today. That's right. They that's actually right. just arrived about a half an hour ago. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And uh, we have flowers that you received that have seen their days. Yeah, they probably should go into um, the flower land on the other side of the sky. Right. Yeah, they've seen better days, but they're beautiful still, even dried. So I love the suggestion of birth flowers and their meaning. Let's start with January. Mm-hmm. Do you know what January's flower is? Uh, y- carnation. That's right. Carnation symbolized love, fascination, and distinction. Distinction, eh? It is also associated with admiration and gratitude. So carnations are an interesting flower. They were really popular in the 80s. Do you remember that? Of course I do. Yeah. I wonder why they were so popular. Like... It's interesting to think that a flower could be popularized by a certain time frame or years or decades. But I do remember carnations being the flower of choice for proms and things like that, especially in the early 80s. They make great boutonnieres, so the flower that you put on your lapel. Mm -hmm. And I think they're inexpensive. Well, and they last long, even more so than that. I think it's because they last long. And they come in such a wide range of colors. Um, And they're used for all sorts of things still. I mean, they're used for uh, weddings and... Mother's Days and and doing those. What are those things called, Amanda, where you kind of use flowers and you build a little design? And sometimes it's a wreath. Sometimes it's like... Sure, a wreath, yeah. You can... Or head. We used to wear them like in our hair. You did? Maybe I'm wrong. Are you thinking of baby... Baby's, baby's breath. breath. I mean, carnations and baby's breath were were uh, good friends. Yeah, they go hand in hand. In like hand. 1984. Sure, sure. But I, I think the thing about carnations, like you can get, there's so many different kinds. There's like little ones that my mom has in her garden. Sure. And then really big full ones. And those big sort of pom-pom like full ones. Right. Um, can actually be really stunning in bright colors. Did you know they're from the Mediterranean originally? I didn't know that. Yeah, they are, which That's is a, really interesting to pe- me. People born in January, it's it, it said they're ambitious, determined, practical, and disciplined. Interesting. Would that describe your sister? Who's born in January? Uh, I, to a large degree, I think. Great. Well, shall we move on? We have many more months. Yeah, February. These people are described as friendly, creative, compassionate, and intuitive so we have two dear friend listeners to the podcast, Lois. Oh, yes. Who talked about quilting and Melissa. That's right. She's been on. She talked about marshmallows once. That's right. And her or her and their flowers or the flowers of people from February are violets and irises. Now, in Lois's case, they're not because she's allergic That's to right. every flower. That's right. But... Um, Yeah, violets and irises apparently represent faithfulness, loyalty, and wisdom. And they're associated with hope. 
Isn't that interesting? And yeah. with spring coming. Well, that makes sense because spring, you think of hope, right? The hope of the new season. But an iris, isn't it? Iris is like a late June, early July flower. That's like right in the summer. Right, for North Americans. But also, what flower grows in February here? Um, Edelweiss? No. Like, isn't there like a wintry flower? No, the Edelweiss will grow in mountains. What are those little snowballs called? I think they're called. They grow in spring. I'm not saying they grow in February right. in Canada, but. I don't know. I mean, I always think of roses for February because of Valentine's oh, well, yeah, Day. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, violets and irises are valued for their delicate beauty and their fragrance, Amanda. They are, yeah. They, I don't know about iris fragrance, but violets for sure. Irises, aren't they the fleur-de-lis? Isn't the fleur-de-lis an iris? Oh, I think so, yeah. All right, let's ho- head over to March, Amanda. All right, what do you suppose March's flower is? March is my aunt is born in March. Um, okay. Michelle Miracle is born in March. It's true, March 1st. Yeah. Well, March's flower, you're going to go, of course it is, a daffodil. See, I associate that with April. Oh, really? Yeah. End of March. I mean, crocus might be more apropos because yeah. yeah, that like, really is the first flower. I love a crocus, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the daffodil. Now, that symbolizes rebirth, happiness, new beginnings, and it also represents hope and the arrival of spring and inspiration as well. That's a nice oh, I didn't know that. thing to think about. Yeah, an inspiring flower. Someone born in March is supposedly imaginative, independent, empathetic, and dreamy, whatever Ooh. that means. Dreamy. That's interesting. So we go to April next, Amanda, where the people are supposedly energetic, adventurous, confident, and dynamic. Mm-hmm. What flower comes in April? See, I would have guessed daffodil, but I would be wrong. No, daisies and sweet peas, apparently. I okay. Don't, I don't know if I can picture a sweet pea. Sweet pea makes a beautiful flower, okay. and they're often used in floral floral arrangements. Well, daisies are, I mean, is there any is there any more simple, sweet, joyful flower than a daisy? I don't think so. Daisies and sweet peas both are associated with innocence, purity, youthfulness. Yeah, a daisy really is youthfulness. Like when sure. you think of a field of daisies, a meadow filled with daisies, I mean, you just think of being a little kid and making or picking daisies and making a wreath of them or... I don't know. Did you ever? I used to always do. He loves me. He loves me not. Right. With daisy petals. Did you ever do that? As a kid, I think so because it was just the thing you did with daisies, right? Sure. Yeah. As a kid. Mm-hmm. No, but I, mean, I, done, I do it pretty often. I haven't done it recently. It's the only way I know that you truly love me. I guess from the, ho- the daisies. I hope I get the right number on the daisy petals. Yes. Daisies are found around the world, and sweet peas are native to the Mediterranean and parts of Asia. Hmm. I mean, and daisies are used, the Gerbera daisy really had its moment in the 90s, didn't it? I guess. You're very, like, um, floral, year-focused. Yeah, I know. When you when you talk about April, mm. the thing I remember most about April is April's gemstone is a diamond. Right. Yeah, the most expensive. Which one is the cruelest month? Isn't it April? Is April the cruelest month? According to T.S. Eliot, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, April. I just think, I just think certain flowers become popular. They become trendy for weddings, for bouquets, and sure. so a Gerbera daisy. I think really. I mean, they're still beautiful, and people still buy them. Of course, you can get them at Costco. I, 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 the thing I don't love about Gerbera daisies is they often have to be put in a clear straw yeah, to keep their to keep them all. Bright and sunshiny and fluffy. And I think their their stems get a little bit, like the flower gets heavy for the stem. I think they can over time, so that's why they do that. I but see. You, you don't have to put them in a plasticky thing. You know who had Gerbera daisies at their wedding? Who? My sister. I see. She had browns, a lot of browns and reds. And yeah. she got married in April? October. Okay. So. <laughs> and they were a lot of, they were like ready reds and oranges and things like that. Fall colors. Okay, shall we move on to May? I know a ton of people born in May. Yeah, and it's our wedding month too. So oh. May is Lily of the Valley or Hawthorne. 
I don't know if I could picture a lily of the valley. Yeah, lily of the valley are those little flowers with the little bell-like flowers that we get oh, is that up what north. Is? They're everywhere. Mugetti. I thought they were called we, we snowballs. Always, or... No, no, we call them mugetti in Italian, and we mm. always say it to you, and you kind of laugh at the word. Well, the lily of the valley signifies sweetness, humility, and happiness. I don't know what a hawthorn looks like. Well, apparently they represent hope and love and protection. What is a hawthorn flower? I don't know. And my parents used to live on Hawthorne Drive. And I, see. I I thought it was a tree. I didn't realize it was a flower. Well, hawthorn looks like it comes in different colors, white and pink. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a shrub, I guess, a thorny shrub, Amanda. So it's the flower from a, a thorny shrub. I'm trying mm. to get a picture for you. This is what they look like. So not, not my oh, favorite. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'll stick with the lily of the valley. We have... We had a ton of lily in the valleys in the front, and they come they come in early. They're almost like ground ground cover. Yeah. They have a lot of uh, foliage, I guess is what you could say. Is sure. that how you say it? Mm, I guess. And that's what they look like. Oh, yeah. They're really pretty, actually. But they're small. Yeah. And we were listening to Spare, and they mentioned lily of the valley in it. Oh, right. Harry, Prince Harry was saying that Meghan had lily of the valley in the bridesmaid, or the... Flower children. Flower girl children's hair wreaths, Mm -hmm. as did his mother, as did uh, his sister-in-law, Kate. Kate, But that Megan was um, chastised for doing that because they are poisonous when ingested or whatever. (laughs) So let's not eat Lily of the Valley. Uh, Yeah, I think you'd have to eat a great amount, but anyway. People in May are reliable, patient, loyal, and persistent, Amanda. Hmm, that's good. Those are good qualities for May guess. babies. Yeah. Are you ready to move on to June? June people are sociable, curious, expressive, and romantic. So let's see what flower would be what, associated. What would you guess? Well, I would say rose, romantic, right? And you got it. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Also, honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. That's that's yellow, right? Two why does every month get two flowers? I guess because if you can't get one, you can get the other. Well, roses symbolize love, of course, beauty, and passion. I think that's one we all know. And roses are very timeless. Like roses have been in different... I think roses go through trends where people like a bud rose versus a more opened rose. Sure. I think in like the 40s, I know looking at wedding photos of like my grandparents, for example, they had lots of flowers, but some very like full, what we would think of as almost past their prime, kind of very open roses. Oh, That was sort of the trend back then. And then if you look to sort of the movies of like the 80s, 90s, where people would get a dozen red roses, right. they would be a tight bud sure. of a rose. So even a rose, although it's always been, I mean, a rose by any other name, right? Like William Shakespeare talked about roses. So sure. it's always been, they're always a beautiful flower. But What's your favorite color rose? Oh, that's a good question. I've always loved yellow roses. They're mm-hmm. s- very significant in my family because my grandmother loved them. Okay. My mother loves peach roses. Um, But if you were to pick the color that you love the most. I think I do love an orchid rose. Oh, what color is that? Orchid Orchid rose? Orchid, the color orchid. Purple? Yeah, but not a dark purple. A lighter purple because I love the way that the purple looks with green because I love the, the contrast. Okay. So a green stem and then the light lavender color. Maybe lavender is a better. Okay. An orchid. Yeah, because I need to know when I order you roses. I'm trying to think what other colors do they come in. I like white roses. Orange. Those are more like my mom. Pink. No, don't Champagne. have time for it. Champagne, I don't know. Blue when they dip them in ink. I don't want a dipped ink one. Okay. Like a rainbow pride one. Sure. That's great for pride, but not for my birthday. No, but sometimes they have them just like that. Um, and I'm trying to think. There's dark, dark red. No. And then white. White roses? I like white. We established mm. that, yeah. What color uh, honeysuckle do you like if I was to get you a honeysuckle? The bright pink. Is that what honeysuckle looks That's what like? it looks like. It's very w- tropical looking. Yeah, it feels like if you're going to do honeysuckle, this is the plant you're going to get. Hang on. Wasn't there a famous song called Honeysuckle Rose? Yeah, there was. So there you go. There was it be... a song or a poem? I think a song. There's definitely a movie, and there's lyrics to the song as well, Amanda. Yeah, I think it was a very famous song. Well, while you're looking at that, 
have we talked about people born in June, what they're like? Romantic. I think so. That's how I got. Oh, right. So let's move on to July. We know a lot of people born in July and they are associated with water. I think water lilies and delphiniums. Oh, I love a delphinium, don't I? What is a delphinium? Delphinium is a really cool looking flower. And I believe we had them on my lapel at our wedding. Mm -hmm. That was the one I liked, wasn't it? Well, delphiniums are associated with an open heart and a passionate love. Water lilies symbolize purity of heart and enlightenment. Certainly a water lily, we think of the lotus flower, right? Um, Floating on top of the still water. And an image that I used to use in yoga practice is the idea, and certainly for meditation as well, that this lotus can float seamlessly along on the water, even though perhaps there's a lot of murkiness under that water. But being able to know that there's murkiness and even tumult underneath you, and to still sit gentle and still on top of it, that is, you know, steps towards towards calmness, enlightenment, allowing yourself to be like water off the petals of a lotus flower, let, letting them, letting the, your troubles beat up and, and uh, roll away. Delphinium is definitely not what I had on my lapel because it's kind of like a... Delphinium looks like a cone flower. Kind of like, what's that one that you love out, out in New Brunswick? Uh, lupin. Lupin. It kind of has a lupin. Looks like look a lupin, it. yeah. It was it was kind of Stephanopolis or something like that was the name of the flower that I had. Stephanotis. On my, there you go. Yeah, I like Stephanopolis though. because I always think of that um, mm-hmm. poli- pol- political George uh, Stephanopoulos. Yeah, yeah, that's who I think of. Uh, was on my was on my lapel. George Stephanopoulos was not on your lapel. No, but but that, a Stephanotis was. Yeah, love a Stephanotis, mm-hmm. but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about delphiniums and water lilies. So now we head. Do you want to talk about people born in July? Oh, sure. Sure, people born I, in we July. We could guess. Emotional. Guess? I will guess that oh, yeah. they're emotional. Well, not with not with all the water lily images I just explained. I, you're pretty much on the nose. They use different terms, but okay. But emotional. I would say emotional, guided by heart, not reason. Um, I'll, I'll do those two. So... And your mom's born in July, so let's see if these... Yeah, we're not going to list all our family no, no, members no. born in July. We no, have very enough. many. Caring, mm-hmm. sensitive, mm-hmm. nurturing, mm-hmm. intuitive. Interesting. So so I think you were pretty much... They just use different words for mm-hmm. it. So we go to August, Amanda, so right in the heart of the summer. This is putting me to sleep. I'm I see. yawning here. People born in August are charismatic, mm-hmm. bold, mm-hmm. warm-hearted, and self conf- self confident. So what? Uh, we flower? have a lot of August babies in my family too. We do. We have two. We have my father and Carrie. My oh, that's right. Yeah. Carrie's awesome. Carrie listens to the podcast. So, yeah. what flower would you send to Carrie? I would in send August? Carrie a poppy. Oh, a poppy. You know those bright orange ones that I love and bright pink ones. Yes. With the, I love how they have like the dark, dark, dark center, mm-hmm. and then the bright pink. Leaves. I mean, I don't know if that would be the first thing I think of a carry, but it is now because that's um, that and a gladiola. Yeah, well, a poppy you can't really send to people because when you pick a poppy, the the petals I know. fall immediately. I know. And I planted some poppies. But you can okay. We'll send carry some gladiolas. Gladiolas are, are the flower of Australia. Are they really? Yes, they're they are. they're they are like Australia. They're big and they're bright and. They let you know that they're there. Gladiolas represent strength, integrity, moral character. That's pretty much what I said. And then poppies are, of course, associated with remembrance. Of course, we use them on Remembrance Day here in Canada and in the in um, in the Commonwealth. Um, That's why it reminds me of. I would have guessed November. Yeah, but that's our connotation with them. That's not when they grow. Uh, imagination and poppies are associated. They are the flower of sleep. Are they really? Yeah. Well, opium comes from poppies. I guess. So. Deep sleep. Yeah. yeah. I love poppies. Isn't there, in Wizard of Oz, isn't there like a poppy and they all fall asleep? Yeah, pretty much. They go in a poppy field, if I'm not mistaken. How do you feel about gladiolas? They, they are... They make a statement. And they, they get used in arrangements when you want to 
bulk it up, right? I think we sent an arrangement today that had some serious gladiola happening. I don't know, maybe not, because they're not in season right now, but the, it's, the it, picture had gladiola. It's funny, gladiolas, gladiolas, I can't even say, don't do much for me. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I haven't planted them in our garden, but poppies do a lot for me. Mm-hmm. And I planted the poppies, and they don't seem to be coming up, so maybe... I should plant gladiolas. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe well, I'll do that next 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 time. Are you ready for September? So this would be your flowers, Amanda. Yeah. See how you feel about them. I'm trying to picture them. Asters. And forget me nots. And forget me nots. I can't I've forgotten what a forget me not. They're looks like. so small, those they flowers. Are, right? They're the ones that that I often run over with a lawnmower. Oh, that's nice. At the, <laughs> At the cottage, forget-me-nots are like a beautiful color of of blue-purple, but they're tiny. Oh, yeah. They're pretty, though. They are pretty. Well, asters symbolize love, patience, and daintiness. They must be small, too, asters. And forget-me-nots represent true love, memories, and hope for the future. Oh, asters, you know what? Oh, asters is like, almost like a date. It's from the Daisy family. Asters, uh... Edith planted some asters. She had picked asters and has asters growing in their oh, front really? yard. Yeah, I'll oh, show them sweet. to you. Yeah, that's, that's And she's a September baby. And there you go. That's interesting. Daintiness is an interesting thing for it. But people born in September tend to be detail oriented. So fine, small details. Sure. Um, do you want to read about more September people? Uh, I'll, I'll read more. Sure, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, the forget-me-nots are also associated with loyalty and memories, and you always you always remember everything and have hmm. great association with memories. So, and I'm pretty loyal. September folk, like yourself, are detail oriented. Check, analytical. Check, mm-hmm. practical. Yes, perfectionist. <laughs> check. Yeah. Yeah, those are very true for you. Mm-hmm. So October. Oh, this is a fun one. October folks are diplomatic, charming balanced and romantic you know what is a fun flower and i would not think of it as an october flower a marigold oh yes marigold yeah. and then the other one is calendula calendula oh is that how you say it Cal- yeah because it's used in medications for oh. inflammation if i'm not mistaken well <laughs> let's go back to the marigolds okay um and lest we forget downton abbey Edith's little daughter is named Marigold in that. Okay. Marigolds symbolize passion, creativity, and grace. I don't think of marigolds as a graceful flower. They're so bright and colorful. I mean, I love that they're bright and colorful. Interesting is uh, both calendula and uh, marigolds are Mm. edible. Marigolds are edible. You can make a marigold tea with it. They're also both bright orange. Yeah. Come in bright oranges, which is a November color, so or October. Yeah, sure. Like the color of pumpkins, really. Fall and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Speaking yeah. of pumpkins, I just got some pumpkin seeds, and I'm thinking of planting them. Will they be ready for October? Where are they being planted? We don't have any land. Amanda came home, and I was planting a lot of seeds. In and what? In boxes? In little, in little, what I'm thinking of doing is planting the pumpkin seeds. Pumpkins are not meant to be a potted plant. <laughs> I know that, but what I was going to do was I was going to take it once it, once it developed a bit mm-hmm. and plant it at the cottage and see if they, okay. they don't, don't provide they pumpkins. they want to be moved, but. Well, I'd like, I'd like all the joy of a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin mm-hmm. without having to purchase one. I mean, they cost a dollar, but yeah, Okay. No, things are expensive. Folks, I had to plant some basil seeds because basil was very pricey here. Very pricey. Yeah, yeah. so. What do we know about October babies? I think I said they were charming and all this nice stuff. Graceful. Mm -hmm. Um, November. Well, I wanted to see calendula. Does it mention that it's used in like tonics and stuff? Oh, let me see. Yeah, they have healing properties like marigolds and are associated with comfort and remembrance. So there you go. Amanda's yawning up a storm. We go to November now. I'm ready for the year to end. Well, we're almost there. So November. Chrysanthemums. Oh, yes. Also known as mums. Mums. Yeah. It took me a long time to realize Chris, that mum was just a short form for chrysanthemums. Do you enjoy a chrysanthemum? I love them. I know you do. I, I'm always struck by that. You know why? Because there's so much color late in the season. Right. 
And they're hardy. They are hardy. You can put them out and they last a good long time. You know, where most flowers are like, we're done. They're the like, basil's g- like, we're done. They're like, give me the cool breeze. Give me the yeah, coolness. They're a hardy. I think there's something really like fearless about a mum. Well, they represent joy, optimism, and long life. They're also associated with friendship and support. I think that's what it is I like about them. There's a friendship and a supportness to them. I used to give mums often to your your Nona. My grandmother. And then I found out that she was upset because she thought I was giving her the flowers of the dead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what mums are used for in, in Italy. So that's what realize. she's used And then she said, my friend said that they're not just for the dead. And I was right. like, oh, okay. I didn't realize that's what you're thinking this whole time. Well, I never used to think anything really of chrysanthemums. But then when you start to have joy and love for them, mm. I kind of really appreciate they them now. They look so in the fall when you have them on a stoop in a little in a little thing and like in a, you know, in a container. Or you could cut a pumpkin out and put it inside the pumpkin and have it sticking out of the pumpkin. You want mums out of a pumpkin this year? Well, if I can grow my pumpkins. Like the the mums or the hair of the pumpkin? Well, I mean, the pumpkin could be more like a vase or an urn that you have. An urn, okay. Or um, a pot, I guess. Listen. What? Give me the pumpkin, and I'll and I'll bring the mums. Okay. okay. <laughs> Are you ready to move into your month? Yeah, it's we're getting towards the end of our episode. Perfectly timed. We're in December. Definitely my month. Some people say you're self-absorbed. <laughs> Is that what it says? Does it really say that? <laughs> no. It says all good things about every other month, but mine. No, okay. I'm joking. Okay. You're going to say check if it's true. Your flowers. Do you want to hear uh, your flowers? Whichever. Which Which do you want to hear first? Start with my. What you're like? Well, yeah, what they say December folks are like. Optimistic, adventurous, honest, and friendly. You're supposed to say check or not check after each oh, one. Oh, okay. Optimistic, check. Adventurous, check. Honest, check. Friendly, check. Yeah, check to all that. I don't know how friendly I am. Well, it depends on who it is and what mood you're in. Okay, what is my flowers? Right. I always know it as poinsettia, which I don't love that No, flower. it doesn't have either. It doesn't have poinsettia here. Your oh, really? Your flowers, one is good, one is one is holly. I like holly. Well, holly. But the other one is really interesting to me, the narcissus. Oh, no. That's why I was joking that some people say that you're into yourself. Oh, I see. But that's just a joke. Because actually, narcissus symbolizes rebirth, self-reflection, and good wishes. Like echo and narcissus. Do you remember that? I myth? don't. No. I don't really either. Holly is associated with fertility. Oh, that's cool. Protection and everlasting life. Is this Narcissus? It looks like a daffodil. Oh, that's a Narcissus? So Narcissus is the daffodil that has the orange, the white daffodils. Let me make sure. Yeah, it looks like it. I typed in Narcissus. Oh, Narcissus, also known as daffodils. What? That's a little bit. Come on. (laughs) Well, whatever. I like Holly. I do like Holly. I like Narcissus. You do? Well, now I'm going to decide that daffodils are just yellow and that Narcissus are the white ones. Oh, that's good to know. I don't. I think I just made that up. I decided You know what? That. I'm going to plant some Narcissus in the fall. I'm going to plant some Echo. <laughs> I was like, what flower is that? And I'll plant some, what's yours? Lily of the Valley and... Forget-me-nots. And forget-me-nots. I'll plant some of our flowers I outside. asters were mine. Asters? What did I say? Forget-me-nots. Lily of the Valley. No, that's me. For so, asters and forget me nots. I'll plant those and I will plant holly. I can't because it's a big, big shrub. And we. But there's so many other flowers that didn't even show up in the month, like peonies and ranunculus. I love peonies. That should be June. I don't think. I think this list is. Emma, we did our best. Emma did not come up with this list. I came up with this. I did some research and I got this I list. I know. So. And I'm just telling Emma. That we did our best. We did our best. I hope that worked for you, Emma. Thank you, everyone who listened. If you have a show idea, please pass it on along because, Amanda, at this point, I can't even think of topics for our show anymore. Oh, no, I know. I feel like I've covered everything that's possibly possible to cover that's non-exciting. Well, I'm sure there's always more. All right. Well, Amanda's fading fast. So I I'm am. Gonna... I apologize. No, it's okay. I would like to take a nap. All right. Amanda's going to take a nap. I'm shooting hope. a commercial today and I'm tired. All right. So we hope this finds you napping away. And until next time, we hope you were able to listen and sleep.